Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Planet Tyro to celebrate, the, well, to put the nail in the coffin on a Ralph Batchy retrospective. I'm here with my buddy, my partner in crime, my, well, I, what, what, what should I call you? The guy on, on, he's been on death row with me through this whole uh, ordeal, the cat face killer? Ground zero, baby. Ground zero for Ralph Batchy. Guys, we have covered all the feature length Ralph Batchy movies. We've got one more little mini project to talk about, but last oh, time... Oh, my God, it's a Christmas gift! <laughs> Man, I really hope we can upload these videos before Christmas. But last time, we spoke about Cool World. Guys, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put a link on the top right corner to go back to that discussion. And all of the discussions we mentioned before, from Fritz the Cat to Fire and Ice to Wizards, Lords of the Rings, Heavy Traffic to... American Pop to all of them. We've spoke about all of them, guys. We've covered every single Ralph Bakshi movie. And after Cool World, people thought Bakshi is done. Bakshi is out. He is a, a relic of the times. You know, the great animator director of the 60s, 70s who had put his, put his pen down, put his pencil down or what have you. But no, it wasn't over for him. And people were happy to hear that he's working on another another project. Because after Cool World, people were like, come on, don't lay it in like this, Bakshi. Don't do it. You've got to do something else. So there was rumblings, I believe, in the first in the late 90s, 2000s, that Bakshi was working on the project, that he was shopping around to some animation studios like Pixar and DreamWorks. They passed on it. And when we got to, what, 2014, 2013, you know, that's when the rise of all these self-made projects by the hands of fundraise and such a kickstarter came about and the actually decided that because i ain't getting the funding from the big studios i'm gonna do it my goddamn self and i can because now people can help me the public my fans can help me make this creation this idea i've got so what that led to is ralph actually running a successful kickstarter campaign i believe it was in 2013 2014 and it was for a project called the last days of coney island apparently originally he did want it to be a feature length movie but finality, for whatever reason, because apparently he did do most of this by himself. He did hand draw this mostly. I think he had just, he didn't have the, it wasn't back in the 70s and 80s where he had studios and all these workers. It was mostly him and his son, I believe, as well, helped him do this. So he raised $20,000, I believe, of Kickstarter. I might be wrong about that figure, but he reached his goal, suffice to say. And he did, he did release the short I believe it went on streaming first, but now, today, you can watch it on YouTube on Ralph Bakshi's channel for free. It's a 22-minute short, again, called The Last Days of Coney Island, and I fucking hated it. <laughs> All that leads up just to that. And you know what? It, the feeling's mutual. Like, when we first started this project, I watched four of his films, just kind of scattered gun, like for no particular reason, uh, technical difficulties. But I ended up watching this one as one of the first ones. And I was just like, oh my God, dude, please let this be like an anonymous, anon anonymously. And it wasn't. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, and it's what we're talking about now. So, Well, as always, I'll let you go first. What did you think of this short? How did you feel coming away from this? Oh, God, man. What did you hate about it? Since we both know we both really disliked the movie, what's, what's the problem here? Uh, everything. <laughs> I mean, the animation is not good. Everybody looks, their faces all look the same. The character design is kind of, uh, you know, mucky. Um, the background, which I appraised his background work and Cool World, which we just talked about. Well, the background in this looks like something a kid made in the 70s. The story is, I guess, mediocre. But with everything else bad, that's not going to pull it up. Mm. You know, just to say this, like, this is a clown shoes to me as well, but I hate this versus Cool World. I didn't hate it. So it's a question of which is more of a clown shoe, the left or the right foot to me. Well, you know what, man? Let me, let me, for people who listen to this, if you're a Bakshi fan, you listen to this thing, you motherfuckers just don't get it. Cause this what is social the... commentary are you pulling from this? No, Don't give me that bullshit. No, no, let's let's talk about this because I know I'm reading the reviews. I'm on um, IMDb right now, I'm on Tomatoes, and there's some people because this is a. Look, if we all right, let's read the synopsis here. So, in the cheap glitter and glow of a fading Coney Island, a group of characters live out their sordid, strange lives, trying to get somewhere fast, any way they can, and apparently. When I was watching this movie, I couldn't even make out what the fuck was going on. And I know the reason why. Now, I hate the art, but here's the thing. 
Between Cool World and now, Bakshi has been an artist. He's been actually focusing in on this type of character design and I've always hated this type of Looney Tunes, Ren and Stimpy, graffiti, very lazy, slightly lazy, slightly Looney Tunes, slightly abstract character design that I just do not find visually appealing at all. It is, in a simple word, ugly. This looks ugly. The backgrounds all look jumbled up. It looks like you're watching someone's sketchbook. It looks like you're watching Batshi's early sketchwork. And here's the thing. I know it's purposefully done. This isn't about Batshi's skill level. This is about a conscious decision to do this art style. And the reason why I know he picked this art style is because he's been selling these paintings for years. This is how he's been making his living. He stopped being a director animator since the 90s and he was selling these paintings and selling for a lot of money. When you go to Bakshi's website, all you will see is all the backgrounds to movie to this movie. Well, it looks like this movie, but this type of style is what he's been selling for ages. So this is his thing right now. So I'm not surprised that this is what the movie turned out to be, but I hate the art. It's ugly as hell. It's not it's very dull looking, very grim looking, and the story is so minimal and incoherent on top of that it's like three different stories in 22 minutes i don't like coonskin and heavy traffic but those movies are padded out this is just condensed nonsense this is like a ridiculously crazy looney tunes cartoon on acid all the things i do not like about Bakshi is in this movie everything but it's with the most ugliest art style and i do not care for the story but although i hate this I can see it's very focused. This is exactly the kind of thing he wanted to make. It's not it's not random. It's not by accident. This is exactly what he wanted to make. So it's targeted towards people that like his art, who like this being his art style. This could have been a short using the um, uh, Fire and Ice art style. I would have liked it a lot more. Still wouldn't have liked the story more or whatever. But again, I just don't like this. Again, And he's gone back to the street his street urban stories, which again, I do not like. So everything about this movie, I never liked. This is every aspect of Backstreet, I do not like. This is just targeted for his fans. I don't know if this is worse than Cool World to end it on because it's not a movie, it's a short. So I'm like, eh, you could completely skip it. But man, I feel bad for you watching this in the middle of our retrospective because you finding out this is the last, his most recent thing he made definitely just already just kind of ruins the whole thing for you. But for me, watching this in sequence, it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth. But I kind of like understand that this is a passion project, which I respect. Kickstarter project, I respect. People wanted it, funded it. He showed clips beforehand. People knew exactly what they were getting. If you go on the YouTube video and read the comments, those are the people he made it for because them people are loving this movie. I didn't see one comment on this YouTube comment section saying that this is a piece of shit. This looks horrible. Nope, the people that funded this movie got this movie. So I can't hate Bakshi for that. But personally... I think this movie is not good at all. I do not like it, or I pretty much hate it. And I just, for 22 minutes, it felt like a fucking hour. I don't even know how I felt about the time length, but I do know that I hate this movie. I'm glad that the people that paid for this to get made got what they wanted. But there's a reason why Pixar and, you know, other studios didn't want to make this movie, because it's schlock. It's about, like, an axe murderer going around working for the mob because he caught some clown banging his mom or something. It's like, it's... Fucking you, you're weird. You're just saying that. you just saying that. I know. Exactly. It's like, it's, it's fucking weird. And weird isn't necessarily bad. It's ugly. Ugly isn't necessarily bad. You know, dark and gritty, all that shit. You can make a great movie. It's not even a great movie. You can just make a watchable movie. Like, I don't know. I, I have the graphic novels of Sin City translated to live action. Not great movies, but they're still watchable, right? You know? So, like, this to me is... If you love it, then I hope you help with the Kickstarter, because I'm glad I didn't help with the Kickstarter. This is terrible. I wish I didn't watch this. Just like Cool World, I wish this was deleted from my memory. To be fair, not saying much. The best thing about the movie is that Bakshi released it for free. <laughs> you know, you don't have to pay to watch it. It's on YouTube. He made it free. I don't really know why. He could have still made money off it, but it's a, it's a short anyway, so I guess it, you know, he just wanted to put something out there. But I don't know, man. For the fans. And you know yeah. what? Great for all you guys. Yeah. It's just your bundle of weirdness that I don't understand. Just like how I have a bundle of weirdness other people don't understand. Like, Spill.com never understood our anime love. Well, you know what? I guess that's their thing. You know, I can't hate them for it, but I can't hate this movie. Well, that's why I have to give it an acquired taste.
because it's not just about me. I don't like the movie, but it's not like he did this by accident. He, he knew exactly what he was doing. He gave the people exactly what they wanted and they were happy. So it's just not for me. And I can't call it clown shoes because I don't find it offensive. I just don't enjoy it at all. So for me, A Quiet Taste is the right title. I don't like it at all, but it's made for someone else. Someone else might like it. Very, very small niche of people who like this movie. Fans of Back no, I can't, I can't do that, dude. Like, I gotta be more selfish. We have, like, what, seven fans following us that rely on my criticism sure. to avoid landmines like this. If you've been following me, you're trusting my judgment. My judgment is clown shoes. Yeah, yeah. Don't watch this. If you trust me at all, don't watch this. If you always... If you always think the opposite of what I feel on a review, go check it out. Funny. <laughs> Maybe this could be a nice gag gift, but again, I don't even know if you could buy it unless it's on YouTube, but I don't know, man. Again, I wouldn't, I personally, let me say it for the record, I personally would not recommend the movie, but um, you know what? Let's kind of trickle in to wrapping up our thoughts on Ralph Bakshi, the animated, the director, you know, let's talk about his legacy. So, you know, um, I appreciate what he try to do and what he did do to an extent he wanted to use animation to tell adult stories and he came with it from a very um i would say inspired inspired place but in his beginnings for it's a cat uh, coonskin and street i i I don't know man i didn't really appreciate because i just felt like he was just being anti-disney for just just because i'm gonna do what disney don't you're gonna see you're gonna see cartoon characters do shit you ain't never seen them do before that's what I do. What about the story? But then later, he started to get away from that and he grew up and, you know, we got Lords of the Rings and Wizards and Fire and Ice and the Mecha Pop. Like, yeah, I can see the animated the storyteller start to grow. But um, sadly, his growth kind of stunted and studios didn't get him. And to be honest with you, he was a bit before his time. I do think so. I think if he grew up, if he started in the 80s, I think people would have appreciated him more. I think he would have had more people to... He needed, he needed better screenwriters, you know, because his stories were never that good. Honestly, his stories were just never that good. But um, I do like the fact there was someone in the animation industry that did try, who did do things that pushed the boundaries. But how do I see Bakshi's legacy? He is, I don't want to call him a relic because that's a, that's a straight out insult. But he's just not someone you really hear about. And I don't know how much he deserves because i want to be that what does what does Bakshi to me deserve in the animation game does he deserve to be in the animation museum but for what what piece of art does he make that i think that's a that should be in the animation museum that's gonna be that's something every animation check out him on a whole as a character as a person and just his collection you know he's someone i would say i think the best thing i could say about Bakshi, have a taste check out clips there's things he's done artistically Bits here and there, here and there, which is really cool in all of his movies. I won't deny that. He's got bits and pieces in everything he's done that is really cool. I will give him that. Very inspired and different from anything else anyone's ever done. I will give him that. But on a whole, and watching his movies from beginning to end, has been mostly a fucking chore. As a storyteller, I think he's very lacking. But as a fan of animation, I really do appreciate what he did. And he did do some really cool things. But I just... He's just not someone you can enjoy 100% or maybe even 50% to be perfectly honest with you. But I guess I can only speak for myself. But, uh, you know, I always, um, when we started this retrospective, again, I wasn't, I had some kind of admiration for him. And I know a lot of people do. We watched the uh, Nostalgia Critic review and even he has admiration. A lot of people have admiration for Bakshi. You know, I do to a point. But I just don't know how much his legacy is really. I mean, you don't see his, his DVD collection on Amazon. You just don't. He's, a lot of his movies are banned and he's very outspoken but you know I guess I, lo- I like him for the variety I like what he did and you know I do feel like we gave him respect by talking about him but I don't know man it's, he's, he's hit and miss period he's hit and miss this is how I feel about Ralph Bakshi okay and in a sense a kindred spirit I know I railed against a lot of his movies in fact really the only one I really liked was American Pop I think that's something that if somebody wants to study animation or they want to study music even in American culture, it is a hidden gem. And just that alone 
is a shi- shining bright point for Ralph Bakshi and yeah. it's something that shouldn't be missed. Sure. His technique that he loved, that he pretty much pioneered rotoscoping, I think there is still a use for it. If somebody with imagination could figure out how to use it, it's there. He set up the groundwork for it being used at a professional level. I do appreciate a lot of him trying something different. We started out on Spill.com, which was about a social media website about movie reviews and stuff. And even though the guys did their movie, their thing was they did movie reviews and they animated themselves as characters doing the reviews. Okay, so for people who don't, for people who don't know what Spill.com was, that's where we started. We were actually not part of the crew. We were just a featured podcast on their website sometimes. Yeah, and they hated anime. They fucking hated anime. So, like, in a sense, I do appreciate the struggle Ralph Bakshi had. A lot of what of his stuff sounded, like, very interesting. He got screwed by his producers, by the networks, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yeah. I can get that. He's a rogue. He's an outspoken rogue. And you know what? I like that somebody is willing to take a stand and talk about what they believe in. Even if I don't believe in it myself or I think it's weird, I don't understand it, I can respect that you're willing to take a stand and do that. I do admire that about the man. And I do think he has one piece that's really good. And maybe some other stuff you can pull from his other works that there's merit in there to learn from. His career can teach you stuff. I do appreciate that. But overall, he's just not my thing. I mean, he's not. His storytelling was always kind of lackluster. I never had a story from him that that was awesome, except for American Pop. I did like that story. It was a little lengthy because it spanned over three generations. But I like multi-generational things. Most people don't, I think. I, I think there's more of a demographic for that kind of storytelling than what people, producers, etc., recognized. But that's, in and of itself, another conversation. Yeah. I do regret that the last two things Ralph Bakshi ever did in terms of animated film or clown shoe left and clown shoe right. To me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I'm just getting slapped on the face while he's wearing it on his hands. Yeah. But still, you know, the last, the very last thing he did, it was purely for the fans. Hashtag for the fans. Yeah, sure. Exactly. And I can respect that. You know, you, everybody else, 99% of people are going to fucking hate you for that. But yeah. the people who are most loyal to you, who put their money where their mouth is, you gave them your loyalty. I can respect that a lot. That takes a lot of courage to me. You know, it's not just about like money all the time and all that other shit. Sometimes, or what you're going to be remembered by. Cause you know, like most people are going to watch that and go, God, that guy was so fucking weird. Right. But then his fans are going to be like, he gave this to us. We asked him for it. We gave him our money. He gave it to us. So, you know, I do it. That like jumps my admiration for him yeah. up quite a bit, even though like, I don't like a lot of his stuff. As a person, you know, I just I do appreciate his struggle, his efforts, his uh, his loyalty to the people that loved him the most. I do appreciate all of that. Even though I bagged on Ralph Bashi most of the time we did this project, I do respect the man greatly. Okay, just to be clear, yeah, that's that's all I gotta say about Ralph Bashi and his works. A lot of people do. A lot of and it's funny you brought us Spill dot com because everyone on there are very you know. What's the word I'm looking for? Contagious about um about Ralph Bakshi. They've got a lot of negativity towards him. You know, they think he's a cuckoo. You know, and funny enough, my boy Corey Coleman, the head of Spill.com and Double Toasted, he's a fucking anime himself, <laughs> which is the most ironic thing. But that's a whole that's a whole other story that we're gonna get into very shortly. Actually, maybe on the next recording if you're subscribed to the channel. That's our Ralph Bakshi retrospective, guys. We took our time with it. We gave almost every thing is individual video except for hey good looking which again i put on par with cooney Island. It's fucking horrible but you know that's it man you got i got love for the guy we took our time out of our lives to do recordings for him guys whether you think we were biased harsh or whatever it's your turn to let us know what you think about what we said or just we want to know what you think of ralph actually did you even know him because that's the point i don't even know if he's celebrated anymore i don't even know if he's appreciated i do know that most of his legacy, his reputation is of negativity and of being this, uh, I don't want to say straight pervert, but just being a deviant or, uh, oh, you called him a rogue, which is appropriate. But, you know, 
when he came out, people thought he was a deviant. They thought it was a pervert. You know, Walt Disney make these beautiful cartoons. What is this motherfucker doing? Yeah, but Walt Disney was a closet case, self-hating, like Nazi guy, kind of even. But like, he made from what I understand. Beauty. He made Cinderella. He also made. He also made hidden porn of all of his cartoons. So, like, you want to bag on Baxi for being a pervert? At least he was open about it. That guy was a closet case. He did make songs to the South as well. <laughs> zobity do bar, zobity day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for joining us on the Rap Actually Retrospective. But I need to thank my partner in crime, the guy who was on the cross with me <laughs> for all these months. The young boy, the cafe's killer. It wasn't that hard. It was no, no, it was fun. Hey, you know what? Everybody, I told this to my girlfriend recently, actually, in a serious conversation. Yeah. Everybody has a crucible in their life. Funny. This was, this was our passion we had to go through. <laughs> Definitely. You see, again, that was one of our things on Planet Tyro, just talking about the kind of, not just the unsung heroes, but kind of the, the, the neglected stuff, the neglected stuff that still somewhat in the public eye that just we just feel should have a bit more raised awareness. And for better or worse, for what Baxi did in the animation game is what I think he deserves the awareness for. And then it's up to you to decide how you want to judge him. So again, leave your comments in the comment section down below. Your thoughts on Baxi, your thoughts on our discussions. Thank the killer for being on these discussions with me. I really do appreciate it, but I am glad that this is O-V-E-R. Yeah, me too, man. I, this saved years off my life. I didn't. You'll recover. We can look back on these discussions and laugh sometime. You never know. When they do, you know, in 10, 20 years, when they uh, this hipster box set of the unsung hero Ralph Bakshi, or, you know, even not to be harsh, not to put anything out there, usually when directors like him pass away, that's when, you know, companies jump on the banner and go, oh, this is director. They bring out these box sets and they make money. So you never know. By that time, we might get more hits on the discussions if, you know, there's a big rise in awareness in these releases. But. Guys, I've said that a million times. Thanks for listening to all of our recordings. There'll be a link in the description if you want to go back and start other discussions. Subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like our fair and honest discussion. And I've got nothing else to say, but guys, we'll see you on the next recording for Planet Tyro. We've got so many other stuff we do here apart from just animation, guys. Check out the playlist. Check out our channel on YouTube, podcast, what have you. Thank you for listening. See you around.